All right, guys, here we are. Day two, Live the Adventure uh, Summit out here in uh, Kernville. Um, people are just doing their, you know, morning routines. Got a little breakfast action, little coffee station. I guess uh, breakfast is going on here. Well, people just kind of waking up out here. Last night, froze my butt off. It was cold out here. Man, it's so much better in the desert. I like colder weather at night. It's almost time. Um, I'm gonna be speaking in the main tent right here. And uh, just so you guys know, I used to have trouble public speaking, but when you put your mind towards something that you wanna accomplish, you eventually will accomplish it if you try hard. So this is one of those things. So I bought a special pen with the intention of signing a contract. And whether you believe in God or the universe or whatever, if you do something with intention, it, the craziest things can happen. So a few weeks later after I bought this special pen, I was signing my first contract. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if there's, if there's something that you can do to convince yourself, like, you know, to prepare yourself in a way, in a responsible way, to prepare yourself for that dream to come true, you need to do that. Before my first paid job ever, I went and I got a TSA pre-check card. And I was like, I don't have any jobs right now. I am not flying anywhere whatsoever. <laughs> but I'm gonna need this in preparation because I will, right? And so you have to get, convince your mind that you, you that you will do this. And so that's part of like learning cameras and audio and everything else and networking part. It's like, I'm telling you, it's like, it's a mental thing too. Like you have to believe in yourself for that to happen. So we brought Larry the Hitchhiker through four states. Went to my first Waffle House. Woo! Yeah. That's right. He even let me pay for it. <laughs> Generous. That's right. went to Vegas round trip this morning to snag seats to take people out in the airplane. Man, that is so, so nice of him to do. The day after arriving from around the world flight, so my hat's off to JP, man. There's a few moments, like, JP said it's like it was a roller coaster. There's some real stressful moments. There was some real, yeah, like whether we were frustrated at how long it had taken to get stuff sorted and get in the air and, you know, getting delayed and stuff like that. But then there was these moments as well, yeah, like where we're just looking out the window, just like this is unreal. And I think one of my favorite things was when we were like uh, cloud surfing, just skimming the, the clouds and when, um, when you had the freedom just to kind of weave in about the clouds a little bit. It was just like, it's unlike anything else when it comes to flying. Because normally you're quite high up and stuff's just slowly moving below. But when you see clouds like rushing past and you're like cruising in and out and you, you feel like you can almost touch them, they're just like big fluffy marshmallows just right there. And you're just like cruising in and out. For me, that was like the biggest buzz of the kind of actual flying when we're in the air. So that was fun. That was a lot of fun. How about a little intro into uh, astrophotography? Astrophotography, cool. Yeah. So collaboration, that's kind of what I've been preaching, is getting out there and having fun with other people, yep. learning, trial and error, find it until you get it right. The best thing of night photography is the night's going to be here for a couple hours. So you have time to do it, you have time to screw up. The best way to learn is to trial and error. How about basic equipment and uh, settings? So what does someone need to do a proper night exposure? Awesome. First thing you need, let me turn this off, I'm probably screwing up your chat. No, it's no, okay. Okay, <laughs> so you need a you tripod. That's definitely first and foremost. <laughs> and a remote shutter will make your life very easy. 
just pushing down on your shutter button is gonna move the camera. That's why so, I do like a two second timer in mine because I haven't got Ooh, a timer good idea. Well, but a remote shutter is a lifesaver at times. Um, and then settings, it's really three things plus the fourth. So ISO, I recommend 3200 or 6400. Um, the newer cameras could definitely push up to 6400 without noise. What about noise. the A7S? Can you pump that up? A7S can go even higher. Yeah. Um, for sure, and it'll look crisp and beautiful. Stop bragging. Um, <laughs> shoot at your widest. And what does that mean for someone who doesn't know? Widest. Widest. So a wider angle lens, especially with night, you want to capture as much sky as possible. So the wider the lens, the more sky you can get, and the more stars you'll have, and the more wow factor you can see. Um, so something between, you know, all the way down to fisheye at like 10 millimeters, up to 18 millimeters, 24 millimeters, even 35 should be acceptable. Um, and then shooting at your widest, which will be your f-stop, that'll be the lowest number possible. Fastest. Um, the fastest. So 2.8 is the magic zone, even lower than that, it's pretty crazy what a camera can do. Um, and then focusing is gonna be the trick. Um, it is quite difficult to focus. You definitely do not want to be in autofocus. Um, if you do that, you're going to lose it if you recompose or if you change something. So you can use it to get your, to get your focus, but then move it right back to manual focus and then don't touch that knob because you'll, be, um, you'll be kicking yourself when you get home and you review those images and you realize they're out of focus. And how long should uh, someone be taking a picture and where's the money spot? Money before spot. it starts so to blur? All depends. All depends. After 30 seconds, stars start... Um, Starts trailing, yeah. Right. Yeah, because they're moving in the sky. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, the Earth's rotating. Uh, so it's the illusion that the stars are moving in the sky. Is true, right? very true. <laughs> right. Your, your shutter speed before your stars begin to trail all depends on your focal length. There is some math to it, some science to it, um, but I'm not a mathematician. But if you want to write this down, it's very helpful. If you take 400 and divide it into your focal length, you will get that max. Um, number which will be seconds so I shoot a 20 millimeter lens 400 divided by 20 is 20 and that is the max I could shoot before stars will begin to trail um, which is kind of a cool effect so if I go longer if I shoot for 30 seconds or if I shoot for a minute or two minutes my stars will be trailing and that's kind of really cool but if you want tack sharp images you'll have to say it's under that formula 400 into your focal length some people say 500 into your focal length um, trial and error, you'll find that magic spot.